Lecture two, rigid body configuration and uh, velocity, rigid body velocity. Let's start our discussion on robot kinematics. Okay, let's directly jump into the, this lecture. I think you all, uh, for undergraduate class, definitely you have learned all of this, by the way, right? You know what robot configuration is. Maybe you don't know the last two bullets, right? What's the rigid body configuration? How to represent the rigid body configuration? Orientation, do you know orientation, right? Okay, configuration is orientation plus the displacement. Anyway, let's have a quick recall about these rigid body configurations and how to represent them. And then we can uh, start introduce some new concept called twist and also screw axis. Okay. Before we start, uh, I think I want to emphasize a very, very important thing about physics. Okay. All what we're um, all all we are doing is using math numbers to represent physics. Okay. The physics law doesn't change, but the numbers change according to coordinate system you select. Okay, so you need to separate physics from its representation in coordinate systems. I want you to think, always think in terms of physics, not in terms of numbers. Okay, that's the key uh, for you to truly understand the, the rest of this uh, course even, okay? Uh, <clears throat> Let me just uh, start with the very, very basic concept, okay? What is a free vector or vector? I think vector by definition is free vector. Okay, let's be more specific. It's free vector. What is a free vector? A vector is a geometric quantity with length and the direction. So a vector will be this, okay? A free vector means the vector actually, I can move it anywhere. It doesn't change this physical quantity we care about. This is called free vector, okay? And uh, <clears throat> if we want to represent a vector, let's say you want to numerically quantify a vector, you have to put it into a coordinate system, okay? So let's say I have a coordinate system. This is my uh, so-called frame, coordinate frame, A frame. This is my B frame. They are located at different locations, okay? If I want to represent this vector, I can represent it in this coordinate A and also can represent it in the coordinate system B. Oh. Depending on which coordinate system I choose, the same physical vector will have different coordinates. Okay. Represent the vector here, I will say, uh, here will be my, uh, let's make sure this is guy. I move it, this guy move to here. Make sure that you have uh, the roots is at the base of the arrow. <laughs> is aligned with the, coincide with the origin of A frame. Okay, and uh, if I want to represent in B, then I will move it here, that's B. And I will call this, so remember, okay, V is the physical quantity. Well, I will call this V superscript, left superscript A is a coordinate in the A frame, okay. I mentioned uh, a key to understand advanced robotics is really to think in terms of physics and the geometry, not in terms of numbers. You have to separate number from, uh, the numbers are used to represent physical laws. You need to understand the underlying physical laws, right? Let's start from today's lecture, let's think in physics, okay? The first one is, in terms of symbol or variable, what? Similar? 
有问题吗 ？OK OK。In terms of this variable, this guy without any subscript, superscript, is the physical vector. What do I mean by physical vector? This is a vector. It's just the unique vector in the world, lying on my screen. It's a unique position, unique direction. All right. I can choose different coordinate system to represent it. Okay, but doesn't change the this uh, physical prop. Uh, Physical vector. Okay, what do I mean by a coordinate system? You have to understand. Uh, let's say coordinate frame. Let's see. I, we use frame a lot in this uh, class. A frame is just a coordinate system uh, based on, uh, let's say, basis vector, right? If you review the linear algebra. Basically, the entire linear algebra is built upon linear combinations, right? That's the key word I want to uh, I always emphasize if you took my undergrad class in linear system. So <clears throat> linear combinations. So you can use linear combination of the basis vectors to represent any vector. Suppose I have a, uh, let's say, a frame, a frame. Then I will have three, let's say in R3, okay? We'll have a three X, uh, let's say, let's call it X, A, Y, A. Those are basis vector. Let's use the hat to represent some unit vector and the Z of A. What I mean by this is X, A, hat, uh, Y, A, hat, this is Z A hat. These three are three vectors. Okay, they, they are orthogonal to each other. And uh, so in this case, uh, but those are physical vectors. I don't, I didn't have the superscript yet, right? If I say X A hat A, this become a number. Uh, has some numerical value vector. What do you think is this one? What's the, this vector, this is the vector, by the way, physically here, right? What's this vector coordinate in A frame? So you have to understand what coordinate means, right? Let's say V of A, V of A, let's say equal to one, two, three, these three numbers. What does this mean? This means, yes, linear combination, okay? This just tells you V, this vector, physical vector, now, no superscript, equals to one times XA plus two times YA plus three times Z of A. Right, you have three vectors. You know how to sum them physically, and this coordinates is just the coefficient of this linear combination of the basis vectors. Okay, if I uh, if we just uh, adopt to this kind of thinking, what do you think uh, a x a of a is? What? Of course, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, right? Because it's just equal to XA plus zero times YA plus zero times Z of A. Those are super, super simple, fundamental, but it's very important. Okay, I want you to know the basics so that you can debug more advanced tools. Okay, uh, that's enough for free vectors. Another thing that people or students often confuse, they think point is the same as a vector because they always use vector to represent a point. But physically, point is different than from a vector. Okay, So P denotes a point in the physical space. Let's say here is a point. I call it P. That's a physical quantity here. It just means 
in this room, on this table, on my laptop, there is a dot here, has a unique position. Okay, if I put some kind of a coordinate system, then I can represent this numerical value, but here is just basically the point. And uh, <clears throat> how do you represent a point in a coordinate system? That depends on, you also use vector, right? But that depends on what uh, coordinate system you choose to represent the vector will be different. For example, suppose this is my P. If I want to say P of A, that's my A coordinate. Uh, let's say this is my B coordinate. P is a point, but I want to represent it in A frame. Then I need to draw a vector here, this vector, from the origin of that frame to that P. This is the physical vector, okay? And you represent that physical vector in A frame. That's the coordinate of P in A. Am I clear? So this will be my P of A, okay? Uh, I can call this, uh, let's say, let me be a little bit more precise. Here is the origin of A, it's O of A, it's A frame. And the, here is the origin of B. O of B, this is a B frame, okay? The physical vector is what? It's OA to P is a vector. That's a physical vector. I didn't. Uh, assign any coordinate to it, yeah, that's a physical vector. If you want to represent P in A, you have to, what, represent this vector in A coordinate. So PA would be defined as OAP A. I'm not sure whether that's uh, confused you or not, but that's become super clear if you truly understand the logic behind it. Again, without putting this A, here it's, it's a physical vector, okay? And I want to represent this. If I want to represent P in B, then I need to draw another vector with respect to uh, the origin of B. This guy will be OBP, from OB point to P, right? That's a physical vector. So then I will say P of B equals to OB of P, B. You can, you're going to see a lot of this later in this class, so you'd better somehow uh, convince yourself. Umbo, does this make sense? You have questions? Now I'm gonna ask you a question, for example. Uh, what about O, B, P? This is a vector in A. Does this, uh, let's say this, uh, this symbol make sense to you or not? What does this mean, Yunhan? Know, huh? Okay. <laughs> So it's this vector, physical vector is this, right? This has its own direction and the length. And you want to represent it where? In A, so you need to move it to A frame like this, right? You move it to A frame and represent it in A frame. That's this means. You see what I mean? Vector is different from its coordinate, okay. So I want to emphasize again. So whenever the left superscript is not present, it means the physical quantity, physical vector itself, okay? Or sometimes I just drop it because it's clear from context, okay? So that may cause some confusion to some people. Uh, <clears throat> I will say uh, think in, I will going to use this term a lot. So coordinate free, coordinate free way whenever possible. Physical law, physics, 
should doesn't change with respect to coordinate system. Okay, if something changes with the coordinate system, that's not physics. That's something really numerical. I'll give an example. For example, suppose you all know from your high school. Let's say we have these two vector v1, v2. Do I need to know their coordinate? I don't. I just draw here, right? Then I know, okay, this guy is my v1 plus v2, right? So let's call it v3. This is a v3 equal to v1 plus v2. This, uh, the relation, let's call it v3, okay? What I mean by coordinate, coordinate three, uh, representation of the physics will say V3 equal to V1 plus V2. Fine, right? Simple. Do I need to associate with a coordinate system? No, I don't have to. So, but, but also I can use different coordinate system to represent this physical law. I can say, uh, I can, I can, uh, I would say express this physics in different coordinate system, in different frames. Okay, for example, I can say V3A equal to V1A plus V2A. Okay, I can also say V3A uh, B. Suppose that A and the B is, uh, is here, right? I can say V3B equal to V1, B plus V2 of B. I can choose a coordinate system to represent the physical law, but, but you cannot say V3A equal to V1, B plus V2, B, okay? That doesn't hold in general. If you want to represent a physical law, you have to choose stick to one single frame, whichever frame you want. Okay, very elementary, but I want to emphasize those elementary stuff. Any questions so far? Separate numbers from physics, okay. Another thing you have to start getting started with uh, a little bit ability of abstract thinking or recognize the fundamental nature of certain formulas. Okay, let's start by having a different view of cross product. We all know cross product, right? From your uh, maybe middle school or elementary school, cross product. You all know what it is. I don't want to repeat this. A cross B equal to this vector, okay? It's that is by different properties and it has a formula, okay? If A is a, let's say A has a coordinate A1, A2, A3, with respect to some frame, I didn't mention here, but it doesn't matter means, okay? Uh, B equal to B1, B2, B3. Okay, and A cross B will be another vector in R3, which is of this formula, right? Now I want you to ask, not do not remember this formula, I don't remember them, but think about them. This is A, think about this in terms of variable B. This is a function of B, but it's also a linear function of B. Okay, so I can say, this guy equal to, if you look at this, linear function can always be written or expressed as matrix times the vector. Okay, if you think about this, B1, B2, B3, can you represent, that's the first element, is A3 times B3, A2, B3 minus A3, B2. 
I can use a matrix that's the first row of the matrix to represent this relation. That will be B1 is zero, right? B1 doesn't appear. Uh, B2 appear with negative A3. So that here, negative A3, and the B3 here is A2. The first row satisfies this property. Uh, I think I uh, got it wrong. I think it's this one. Uh, B2 is with A3, right? So that's negative A3, and the B3 is A2. So here is A2. I got it right this time, right? You will correct me. You need to check my calculations, okay? Uh, <clears throat> the second row is, you see, you think about it as a function of B. Uh, second row is B1 only involves B1 and B3, okay? So the B2 term didn't appear. That means, right? A2 times B, uh, this row, the second row, second column times B2 to, to, the, to the disappear. So that term is zero. And uh, you have, uh, what about this um, directly? So this will be negative A1, this will be A3, right? And uh, similarly, you can say this is zero, and uh, this is A1, this is negative A2. I hope you can accept that. This becomes some matrix. This is a matrix, three by three matrix times B. So cross product from today, maybe you know this before, but at least uh, all of you, from today, let's think about cross product as a linear operator operates upon B. B is something a vector you want to operate, okay? And it's a linear operation, so that it can be represented as a matrix times a ve the vector, okay? We call this one, by definition, we call this guy, in this class, we use this uh, symbol. Uh, in Marie's book, uh, they don't use this symbol, but let's just use this square bracket. If I have a vector, square bracket means this matrix. Three by three matrix, okay? That we call skewed symmetric representation of cross product. It's just exactly what we derived from last slide, okay? I call this matrix, this R3, right? Three by three matrix this symbol, and whenever you have a, so, so if I tell you a, uh, let's give an example. Some of you like to see some number. Let's say one, two, three, my favorite vector. Uh, what is uh, a, this? Will be zero, 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 you first fill, fill up the diagonal entries, right? And uh, this is negative three, two, Three, negative two, uh, what is this? Negative one and one. Given any R3 number, uh, sorry, vector, you can construct the corresponding skew symmetric matrix. Why it's called skew symmetric? You know symmetric. A matrix is symmetric if A equal to H minus four, right? Skew symmetric means A equals to, let's say skew symmetric. Skew symmetric means A equal to negative A transpose. That's called skew symmetric, right? Uh, so that's where we have this uh, uh, skew symmetric representation for a cross product. It's super important, by the way. Now let's get started with uh, some traditional knowledge or material you cover in undergrad class, but we just cover that in, in our own language, right? As I briefly mentioned before, a frame or coordinate system consists of mutually orthogonal basis vectors. 
And uh, this is x cross y equal to z. That need to be satisfied. This is called right hand rule. According to right hand rule, right? X cross y should be equal to z. If it, so, so that's how you construct a uh, canonical uh, frame. A matrix, rotation matrix. I'm not sure how did you learn rotation matrix. Stefan, what is a rotation matrix? Okay. Rotation matrix like uh, what what uh, Daifun described is like a action, rotate something, right? That's what he just described, which is true. What about uh, uh, Yunhan? The same. That's how you define rotation matrix. What's your name, by the way? Here. Uh, uh, 什么你们你学过rotation OK. OK, still an action, right? You think about rotation matrix like a verb, not a noun, but it's actually it has many different uh, meanings. Let's define rotation matrix. Most textbook, oh, all the definitions are equivalent, by the way. Okay, so let's define from the very, very simple way. A rotation matrix is basically specify orientation of one frame relative to other. What do I mean by that? Let's say I have a frame. This is a, uh, uh, let's call, a frame has three coordinate, uh, sorry, basis vector, right? This is X A, this is Y A hat, this is Z A hat. Okay. Now I have another frame, okay? Suppose the origin are, are, are co-located, and uh, let's suppose this is my, uh, sorry, this is Z of B, vector coincide with z of a. Uh, suppose somehow it has different orientation. Maybe this is my x b hat, and this is my y b hat. This is my b frame, OK? This is a b frame. R b a. It's basically a B frame orientation relative to A, but definition, this matrix, this is called rotation matrix already, okay? But definition is just these three vectors. I'm not sure whether you can, Yinghan, what does this mean? We just introduce those into notation. Okay, excellent. The vector of what? This guy. When I say XB, it's a physical vector. I can represent it in B frame. I can represent it in A frame, right? Now, the rotation matrix says, the first one is what is XB represented in A, A frame? In this example, let's say in this example, this R, B of A equal to what? Suppose we call this guy theta. Okay, you can take projection of this. Um, my drawing are bad, but this will be uh, what is X B in A? So you project it into A coordinate. So uh, that will be cosine theta, right? That's the first element. What about uh, x b, the y coordinate of x b in A frame? It's sine, sine theta. What about z coordinates? Zero. Okay. 
And uh, similarly, we can have negative sine theta, uh, cosine theta zero, and uh, z of b in A is, is the same as z of b in B, which is zero, zero, one, okay? But this definition is not really a action. It's representation of error or uh, orientation. Okay, that's the most plain definition for rotation matrices. Are you with me? This is the definition, but I can tell you what this definition implies later, but this is the definition. Let's start with this, okay? Uh, if we define this way, a valid rotation matrix always satisfies R transpose R equal to identity and the determinant is one. So R transpose will be, if you just plug in this uh, definition, will be X B A transpose, Y B transpose A and Z B A transpose times X B of A at y b of a and z b of a. This will be another three by three matrix, right? So you will see that x b transpose times x b is one, right? It's a unit basis vector. And all these things are one, all the others are zero. Okay, because those vectors are orthogonal. Orthogonal means inner product where x transpose y will be zero if they are orthogonal. Okay. So that's the first property. And the second one is because, uh, um, I don't want to prove everything. Let's say this is determinant of R, let's say B of A will be equal to, by the definition will be equal to uh, X B A transpose times Y B A cross Z B of A. Let's say this hat, hat, hat. Okay, and this is equal to one. If we take the right hand rule, there will be one. Because what? Y cross Z is X. Right, that's a right hand rule. X cross Y is Z, Y cross X, uh, Z is X. Right, Z cross X is Y, right? This is, this is the right hand rule that you take that order. So that will be one, okay. And uh, that's the property, but they can also be used to define or categorize the rotation matrix which brings to the uh, definition so-called special orthogonal group. And uh, you don't need to truly know what group means, but, but this term you have to know. You read any book, paper on robotics, they will also say, ah, something in ISO 3. Okay, that means a rotation matrix. In plain word, you can think about them as saying this is a, a valid rotation matrix if it is ISO three. Okay, but mathematicians want to generalize it, uh, so they will define all the matrices satisfy these two property. They will have a set, right? This is a set of matrices. And this set of matrices satisfies many many properties, and uh, they call the axioms satisfy all of them, so they become a so-called uh, group, which is a concept in abstract algebra. Okay, we, we're not going to dive into that. Let's just say, you know, ISO three is a three by three rotation matrices and satisfy these two properties. Okay, in, in, in other words, I say A belong to ISO three. What do I really mean? A is a rotation matrix. Okay, that's it. Let's say that's good enough for this class. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let's see the definition. How do we uh, 
from the definition. Definition is really representing a frame orientation, right? Uh, but, but the rotation matrix has many, many other ways that you can use it. For example, uh, the use of rotation matrix has three basic roles. First one is, this is from definition, okay? RBA means the orientation of frame B in frame A. That's by definition represents the relative orientation of one frame relative to the other. That's from definition. And uh, <clears throat> let's say we given a vector, let's given a vector, physical vector V. Okay. And uh, let's say it's coordinate in frame A and B, as we defined before R, as the coordinates, R V of A and V of B. Okay, so, Typhoon, do you know their relation? It's actually R B of A. So, rotation matrix, actually serves like a change of coordinate for two different frames. Does this make sense to you at all, Yangxing? Yes, why? It's not that simple or immediate to me. <laughs> you have seen this formula before, right? Lubin, why this is the case? Oh, okay. That's the right path. Okay, let's let's go through that path. That's an uh, exercise of coordinate free thinking. Even this formula, let's prove it. That is very important for you to be able to think. I'm not going to prove everything, but it's, at the beginning, I'm going to slowly prove some basic concepts. So later on, you don't have to prove anything, but everything is uh, it makes sense in your mind. Okay. Let's say uh, let's do a coordinate three proof of this change of coordinate. I'm not defining rotation matrix in this way. I'm defining rotation. You cannot have different definition, right? I'm defining the orientation, right? That's our definition. We have to start, our proof has to based on, only based on the definition. Okay. Let's say we have the same physical vector. This is a V, right? It's physically there. It doesn't matter what frame you choose to represent it. And uh, we know V of A, suppose, okay, suppose, let's say suppose V of A equal to, let's call it alpha one, alpha two, alpha three. Is that okay? It's three numbers, right? If you represent the vector in a frame, you got three numbers. And these three numbers means physics. I'm abusing the term physics, <laughs> but anyway, you know what I mean. Uh, v equal to alpha one times x a hat plus alpha two x b hat, uh, not x b, sorry, y a hat plus alpha three z a hat. Hope well, this makes sense to you. That, that, that's the definition of the coordinates. Means the vector is a linear combination of the three basis vectors. And those are three coordinates, sorry, the co linear combination coefficients, which are the coordinates. Okay, 
Similarly, we know, let's say uh, V of B equal to, uh, let's call it beta one, beta two, beta three, okay? Similarly, I will say the same vector will equal to beta one times X B at plus beta two, Y B at plus beta three, Z B hat. I'm using what? Different coordinate system to represent the same physical vector. Here, there's no number, there's just physics, okay? We know these two represent the same physical vector, they must be equal. You see what I mean? They must be equal. So I will say um, <clears throat> alpha one uh, x a hat plus alpha two y a hat plus alpha three z a hat equal to beta one x b hat plus beta two y b hat plus beta three z b hat. No problem, okay. Did I use any coordinates yet? There's a coordinate system in the background, but I didn't use any coordinate system. Oh, sorry. Uh, there's no coordinate. There are three physical vectors. There are linear combinations equal to each other. Okay. So <clears throat> I can, this is the physics or geometry, right? I can represent this equality in different frames. Not sure whether you can, can accept that or not. Okay. I would say I want to state this physics in A frame. X, Y, Z, A, there are three vectors. X, B, Y, B, Z, B, there are another three vectors. I have six vectors, right? There are physical vectors. Now I want to represent their relation in frame A. So then I start to have coordinates. So what I have is, will be alpha one, X A hat A, okay? Plus alpha two, Y A hat A, plus alpha three, Z A hat A, equal to beta one, You have what is this? X B hat is not B. Why is B A? We represent the physics in A. Okay, we represent this relation in A. We just use one coordinate system to represent it. So beta two X B hat. Oh, sorry, Y B. Y B hat A plus beta three, ZB at A. Everything needs to be expressed in A. Make sense? Okay. So we know uh, if you write in matrix form, this is, uh, I will just uh, tell you the equation that X A hat A, Y A hat A, this vector, right? And Z A hat A. This linear combination is a matrix times the linear combination coefficient. If you review the linear algebra that I gave you the review, this is always. This is our matrix vector multiplication. It's a linear combination of the columns of the matrix, right? So this equals to this, right? And this guy, I will use another, uh, let's, let's just use blue. This guy, uh -huh. this guy equals uh, X B A hat, Y B A A, Z B hat A, this is B, sorry. There's another three by three matrix times beta one, beta two, beta three. I'm just 
writing a matrix vector form for this linear combination, this summation. Are you with me? Ruben, what is this? Identity, because, <laughs> right? This is identity. I hope you can see that. This is my annotation is bad. V in A coordinates, right? Equal to this is what is this? That's by definition. It's orientation, right? It's A, oh sorry, B in A. I have V of B. We spent 10 minutes or how many to prove this basic relation, but all I want you to go through is to think in terms of coordinate free way. I'm not, I'm not going to prove anything similar later, okay? This is fine. Any questions so far? This is very important. Okay, now you understand this relation change of coordinates. So rotation matrix, although Daifeng and the, the other student didn't define rotation matrix in terms of change of coordinate or representing orientation. These are two basic ways the rotation matrix, basic roads rotation matrix need to play. They all define it in terms of this, rotating a vector of three by certain degree. Okay, I'm not going to talk about this today. This is the more advanced if you want to learn it correctly. Okay, so I just want to say that this is almost like an action. Okay, this is a verb. Okay, you want to rotate something, it's taking an action, it's operator view. View of the rotation matrix I'm going to discuss next time. Uh, but these two are basic. These are almost like, uh, it's like, it's not action, right? It just represents the orientation and change of coordinate, okay? 